Welcome to Seniors in Action. This is Michael Scott. It's good to be with you. Uh, I'm your host for this channel where we talk of, about things of interest to seniors and trying to keep seniors active. So uh, today we're going to talk about photography to stay active and uh, I'm not going to try to make you a professional photographer or anything, but uh, we will talk about um, uh, things that you can do to get uh, involved in photography. Uh, most people are involved in photography to some extent anyway, but uh, just taking family pictures, which, uh, you know, that works. I mean, that's one way to stay active. So uh, uh, let's get on with it. We have our uh, affiliate marketing disclaimer and uh, then uh, several benefits of photography. And uh, uh, these benefits I took uh, from uh, Jared Brown and uh, there were actually a few more than this but you look on the internet and they've got all sorts of benefits of photography uh, just like benefits of everything else that I've talked about but uh, um, basically it, it talks about learning how to use a camera and practicing basic photography skills is mentally challenging and unfamiliar well that's not exactly true with some of today's cameras because some of the day's cameras uh, are you put them on auto and uh, they do everything for you. So, but I think that uh, if you have a, uh, an SLR camera or a mirrorless camera of some kind and you learn how to use that camera, which means uh, you learn how to use the aperture or the f-stop on it and what ISO means and uh, what shutter speed means, that type of thing uh, really does improve memory, I think. and. Uh, encourages creativity, but um, on the other hand, just taking photos in your auto setting does that as well. I mean, at least it encourages cre creativity and stuff. So so there are uh, uh, quite a few things here. It does stimulate your brain, um, gives you self-esteem. It mentions that uh, if you put your pictures on the refrigerator, it's like your parents putting your picture on the refrigerator when you were a little kid. I don't know if that does anything for me or not, but... Uh, but uh, it can also uh, help with uh, uh, dementia and, uh, you know, getting out of uh, the situation you might be in with a chronic illness and uh, forgetting about that. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, photography, to be a good photographer, you really have to be patient. And uh, that's not one of the uh, things that it mentions in here, but... Um, I have a friend that's a very good photographer. I'll show you one of his pictures uh, in this video. But uh, he gets up, uh, you know, you've got to get up early in the morning to get the sunrise and stay very up very late at night to get the sunset, you know, to get the light and stuff. And so uh, if you're going to be a, um, you know, good landscape photographer anyway, those things are really important. If you're not, uh, you know, a landscape photographer, and we'll talk about different types of photography, but light is still just uh, of paramount importance, and so uh, you may have lamps and things like that. But let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about a few other things. So here's some types of photography. Most of us as seniors, if we haven't been photographers in the past, probably aren't going to be portrait photographers or fashion photographers or we may be landscape photographers we may enjoy going out and taking pictures of landscapes probably not going to be taking pictures of products or weddings uh, uh, <clears throat> I have a friend that uh, does macro photography on bugs and I was trying to find uh, one of the pictures that he sent me of a grasshopper that he did a macro photo macro picture on and macro really means that you get down real close and you uh, um, you take that picture. But uh, uh, pretty neat stuff. Uh, sports, street, travel, food, most of us aren't going to do that. But certainly hobby photography will do. Video photography, I put that on there because uh, that's what I do on YouTube, YouTube now. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, video photography is one of them. Uh, you see these rocks in the stream, but I thought that was kind of a cool picture. That's a very clear stream, and those rocks are um, uh, very uh, different colors, very, uh, very varied colors. And so uh, I thought that was kind of a cool picture, and so I, I put it on here. I took that up at Glacier National Park and a stream bed up there. But, I mean, you can, you can take a picture of whatever you want, and uh, it keeps you active and it keeps your mind going a little bit. Uh, 
Here's a picture uh, again of Glacier Helen Lake and uh, Glacier National Park. You can see the lake way back there. Some of the equipment needed for photography, uh, you can really do it with a with a phone if you want. If, if your phone has a camera, you can do it. But uh, or you can have a little instant Kodak camera. Uh, those you're not gonna you're not probably not gonna get the benefit of memory and and um, you know, learning new things out of those as you would a SLR single lens reflex camera or a mirrorless camera or a movie camera. Um, these other cameras have a lot of settings on them. Like I say, you might use them in the, uh, on the auto setting and uh, take your pictures that way and you'll take very good pictures. But if you actually learn to use your camera um, uh, and all the things that your camera will do, you can learn a great deal. And that... <laughs> That's part of uh, learning photography, but um, if you just want to flash pictures, that's fine as well. But uh, you, you need lenses, uh, filters, uh, flash attachments, tripods, lamps, memory cards, batteries, editing software. It depends on how how deep you want to go into photography because uh, you can you can do it very basically or you can do it very deep. So when it comes to um, <clears throat> How much is going to cost you? You can do it for under $100 or you can do it for thousands of dollars because some of these cameras are very expensive, some of the lenses are expensive, and uh, you can get equipment that uh, costs all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of money. So you've got a wide range there. Now, where do you get training? I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of training schools out there, online schools, uh, LearnDesk, uh, Udemy. Um, check with your local community college, and if you're a senior, they've probably got a free class in photography out there for you. Um, I like the videoschool.com. They've got a number of classes out there on photography. Uh, they uh, they do have a few few uh, free classes. Most of them cost money, but their free classes are pretty good as a introduction to uh, photography. So I want you to look at this picture. This was taken by a friend of mine, uh, Lauren Walker, who is a a very good photographer. And you compare this one to the ones that I've taken on the previous pages, and uh, it looks much better. And so. Uh, that's what you can do if you really know how to use your camera and um, uh, you've got good equipment and uh, know what you're doing. You can take a picture like that as opposed to the very plain pictures that uh, I took. But hey, I enjoy taking them and uh, uh, you don't have to be a, a pro in this area to uh, uh, enjoy photography. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, photography will keep you active, uh, and you may be into it a little bit. Uh, I would, I would encourage you to take a class and and learn about uh, your camera, learn how uh, the aperture settings work and the uh, the ISO works and uh, shutter speed and how all three of them work together and white balance and all those type of things. Uh, so that you can uh, you can be more, even more creative with your camera and take some really really neat photographs. So thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for our next video.